Welcome, viewers, to our ongoing program, Focus, coming to you from Burlington Studio here at Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy, Vermont. And the subject for our show today is photojournalism, with our special guest, Victor Savidra from Brazil. Welcome, Victor. Thank you, Margaret. Nice to be here with you. Nice to talk about photojournalism. This is my entire career on that. Okay, it's wonderful. And you are here from on sabbatical from Brazil, and you are going to share some of the photos that uh, you have taken. And uh, we'd, we'd love to see some of them. And uh, because we, our viewers want to know really what a photojournalist does. Yes, I'd like to show some photos from, from Chile, from the last October when I go to the beginning of this riot in Chile. So uh, I don't know if the camera can help me. This is a photo from the capital, Santiago. This is a photojournalist, a colleague. Oh, okay. And you can see the, the cares it needs to take because the situation in Chile is not so democratical. Mm -hmm. The guy is with a uh, hoodie, with uh, large, long pants, with no. mask, and is about 800, eight deg 80 degrees. Oh my God! And yeah. we need to swear all the all the gas, all the. So that is the all the white is gas there. It's gas. Oh. It's tear gas. The police use a lot of tear gas to stop the protesters. So when you go to the front line to show, to take the picture, to be there, this guy is the is the, more, the most prepared there. But he oh. show how uh, what is the conditions we need to work. Horrible condition. In the riot is normal condition for us. We need to be prepared there. But why the photojournalist, the, the journalist is is retreating, and the protesters have their arms up. They're not surrendering, are they? No, no, it's not a confrontation. You don't have this moment of surrender or moment of uh, retreating. You're taking a breath. You need to get some rest because the 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 climax there is so it's so hard. You need to stop for a minute, not stop to breathe, stop to eat something because the journey is there is about twelve or fifty hours oh. a day, fifteen hours, sorry, oh a day. God. So you need to to rest, to smoke a cigarette sometimes because you need to relax. Yeah, I love the in this photo the shadow. On the ground. Yeah, because oh, you see the, 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 the sunlight there is, is warm. It's really warm, but... Uh, but what is, what's over on the side, Victor? What is that on the side, on the it's left? It's a police car. It's a okay. police tank, really. Oh there is a, they're shooting... Uh, this is a... If I'm not wrong, they shoot water with tear chemicals. So the water burns too, but... It, it burns your skin and your and skin in your eyes and you, you start to cry and need to stop. Yeah. And when you have this equipment, I don't know, this camera to this guy is about, I don't know, four or five thousand dollars. And you don't, you know, you can't take this, this water on your, on your equipment. So you need to protect all the time. Yeah. Does he have something over the camera? No. No, you can't use something over the camera because you lose the quality of the image. Right, right. You need to expose your equipment and try to protect at the same time. But still, this is a confrontation. I mean, the tank is right next to the protesters. Yeah. That's very frightening to see. It, it elicits... You see the protesters, right? they are without rocks, without sticks. They're using masks to protect their face against the tear gas, but they are not attacking. And they are taking a lot of gas in the situation. <sighs> if we can go to the next picture, uh, this is effects on normal people. Right. The girl just behind is taking a lemon in his mouth to help her to breathe. Yeah. This is a mature woman. Yes. Uh, and she's crying because the, the gas is everywhere yeah. on downtown in Santiago. 
It's a very powerful photo, Victor. Yes, thank you. You, you can see there the effects of the gas in yeah. everybody. This woman is not a threat for a policeman with guns, with shields, with helmets, but she suffered the gas. And we can see her looking right at us. Yeah, I, I asked her for this photo. Yeah. I asked her because I see her face and mm. it's, it's so powerful, the, the, the age, the, yeah. the, the, the hair, everything there is... And, and yet she's standing there and she's not retreating. Nobody's retreating in Chile for the last four months. Mm. For four months, the, these demonstrations have been going on? For four months, every day in Santiago, at least, this is happening. And, and the media stops covering it, but this has happened every day. Mm -hmm. And now everything continues because they have the, in April this constitutional uh, plebiscite. Mm -hmm. So they're going to choose if they want or not a new constitution. <sighs> okay. They want that on the street, so yeah. it's great. Okay. Know if Aiden can help us with the next photo. This is a photo from just front the palatial government, the presidential palatial government, and this is the dif the distance between the police force and the protesters. The police force is on the right, and the, the protesters on the left. Well, uh, the police force looks very military, in, you know, in, in not just like an ordinary police force. In Latin America, the most of the police are military. They had headquarters. They use helmets, tanks, protections. is is a military force. Mm. So and they have generals. They have captains. They. Do they have conscri conscription there? No, also? no. The, the, the difference is they don't have conscription. You need to enjoy. Right. But uh, in least, sorry, the, the verb I not. They need to, to join up. They and join enlist. up, but, yeah. but they are a military force. They are the four military force in Chile, at least. Right. And they must have uh, the, uh, the reward of good pay. They have good rewards. It's not so good pay, but they have a lifetime retirement. Mm. They have the lifetime uh, Medicare. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of discounts when you need some medicine because they have their own uh, set of uh, pharmacies, oh. drugstores. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So they have a lot of protection to, to be there. Well, let's go back to the photo and see... The demonstrators there, with the, they have a sign there, Victor. What is what does the sign say? The if the structure is not the dialogue, everything who remains should be destroyed. Because the government uh, was not able to open a dialogue channel with the with the protesters. Like they because they want to talk. Yes, they want to they talk want and to, never yeah. able to talk. They, you know, since the protesters started in October 18, the government already approved seven, seven laws against manifestations. Oh, okay, against it, demonstrations. Against yeah. demonstrations of, mm -hmm. in they don't change any of minimum wage, of mm -hmm. retirement laws, of health laws. No, no. Chile is not talking with the, the population. I don't know if Aiden can show us the next picture. This is the most, more confrontation. You see the guns, you see the burning. Yes, what, what is that pile there? They put some, they, this is for a drugstore. They found a drugstore open the protesters in, enter in the drugstore, remove the, the stuffs inside and burn it in the streets to stop the police to attack them. Behind the pile, you see the Italia Square. They call now the Dignity Square mm -hmm. because now it's, it's the place on every day you can see the, the protesters. 
And what was the former name before Dig Dignity Square? Italia Square. Italian. Italia. Italia. Italy Square. Okay. And you see behind you have uh, these these words. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are the words there? Is Chile awake? Mm -hmm. Because they are talking not about uh, one problem, two problems, three problems is a society problem. So the Chile needs to be awake to awake now and start to change, ask for change. But I don't understand, Victor, about are, there, are those actually prescription drugs that are there being burned in the street? No, no, no. no. The prescription dr drugs should be stolen because it's, it's too expensive in Chile. You have some to buy some prescription drugs. Mm -mm. And I think they should be stolen and distribute, distributed to the, to the lowest uh, income right. population. So you're saying that the poor people and, or, and ordinary middle class people, perhaps, can't access the drugs they need to survive. The, at this time, they ask for, uh, they have a lot of problems on distribution. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot of problems for pricing because it's a private uh, pharmacy, so they can raise the price and pay the 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 feeds after so it's not it's not a problem to them mm. and without this distribution uh, the people start to stolen it's not only drugs prescription is food is uh, a lot of basic basic uh, supplies supplies yes yeah. and this is about a drug store is an example what right. happened i was there when the drug store is there but it's not all the time did you see this confrontation, like be, with the with they're taking this, the the uh, the stuff out of the drugstore? Did you yeah, see that I part see, of it? Yeah, I see, I see, but so, I'm and not, this is one photo from all yeah, that you because, took. because because I never, I not feel safe enough to take photo from the people removing that for the drugstore because they will attack me because my photos can identify them. Right, right, and yeah. can be used for the authorities to identify them. Yes. So at that time, I just walk away a little bit and come back when yeah. everything is done. Because it's not easy to them too, because the police is taking these photos and try to identify and try to use the, the law to, pro, to, to go after who is making this. And it's not my job like a journalist to be there and filming and taking pictures from the police. It's my job to be in the news and show to the people, show to the media what's happening. Right. Thank you so much for clarifying that, because in our protected world, we don't think about that danger. So, okay, what is this now? This is a photo I take. This, just by this antenna in the middle of the photo, is closed just one square from the Palacio government. Mm -hmm. You see the tank t uh, throwing tear water. You see the cops walking and the, the biggest uh, avenue in the country mm. is Alameda. This is a great, they pass just in front of the Palacio government, already destroyed by the confrontation. Mm. And how you see this smoke and the water and the gas is making some cloud behind the, the yes. tank gas. And you can see at the left, a photographer resting. <sighs> because the people needs to rest. Right. The professional right. needs to rest to continue. These are long, drawn out confrontations. Yes. This is start in the morning and finish at about 2 a.m., 1 a.m. It's not easy to be there, but is luckily it? I was able to be there by 12 days. Young, yeah, young. Yeah. A witness. A witness and, and, and show this because I need to bring this back to to my word, to try to, I, I am a freelancer, so I need to go there, take the pictures, and try to sell it from, from the medias to, if somebody wants, right. wants to buy interviews and photos. Um, but I, it's not so good, it was not so good that, that experience. Mm -hmm. This is one of the, I think this is the worst, one of the worst photos I take because this is, um, uh, police shot in a rubber bullet.
every shot throws 12 rubber bullets. And the, you can see for the angle, they are not shooting in the lower part of the body. Right. Right, yeah. So in Chile, you have more than 500 people with problems in the eyes. You have mm -hmm. uh, totally blind persons because the police start to shoot in the head. <sighs> so the rubber bullet just blow off eyes there. You were so close there, Victor. I always take care. I always trying to pass in front of the cops with the camera in the hand using my a journalist ID because mm -hmm. they I like to show them I am a journalist I'm not here to throw rocks I'm here to take take pictures and sometimes they shoot me <laughs> they shot me in Chile in my leg with a rubber bullet but they are they are trying to take care I have a five year son so I need to go back home mm -hmm. <laughs> at least at the end and <laughs> be trying to be the without so many injuries. But in that time, you have the you see the cop. You see they don't retreat. They attack. They are attacking in the in the high part of the body. Right. It's chilling. It's a chilling photo. Yeah, this is from Santiago. Now you can see even the the bullets. Right. The fire. From yeah, the fire and and the top you can see the rubber bullets uh, on fire. Yes. So is another photo. In the front you have the water tank. Oh. It's a police tank who uses again, they use against the protesters. And again, I need to be able to protect myself. So I, I am behind these guys, right. taking some rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I always think in uh, the police aim I mean, the protesters throw rocks. Yeah, yeah. So I need to pray a little bit to not be injured right. by rocks, but I need to be there. The photojournalist needs to be there to show what's happening, to show the cops shooting uh, to the higher part of the body. Right. It's right. not a, a mistake. Yeah. With these two photos, you can see it's a, it's a tactical. Right. They are different cops shooting at the same movement. Yeah. Always protected by helmets, by shields. Always with again with tanks yeah. and the people with rocks. Victor, do the protesters protect themselves with any kind of uh, makeshift body armor? They use some homemade shields. They use masks. Mm -hmm. They use some bike helmets. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and this is the way they they try to protect. They use some woods from the they take from the streets and some mm -hmm. infrastructure, some mobile, but they don't use this kind of protection, the military protection. Mm -hmm. This kind of protection the cops are using now uh, is used by can stop a bullet. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. So. You see here how the pro cops protected. How is bulletproof vest? Yeah. How with helmets? One of the cops on the right is a coronel. Is what? He's a major. Oh, He's a, a colonel, major. colonel major. Yeah. 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 And he asking for the water tank, who use chemicals mm -hmm. to throw against the people because he's tired to talk. He asked too many times to the people to go home. They doesn't answer, so start to throw yeah. the tear water. And they and are women, all the old people, old. the young people. And they just stand there and protest. Yes. And the consequences are extreme bodily harm. When I come back, I live in Brazil, and when mm -hmm. I come back, I stop to throwing blood from my ear respiratory views but about mm. two days after mm. come back because it's too many chemicals in, in the air. And what about the medical help for, the, for you when you took the rubber bullets? I, I don't have any medical help. Okay. In Chile, you have the same kind of uh, health protection you have in the US. Mm. So you, I don't have insurance for going to Chile. 
Mm. It's too expensive because the health there is all private. Mm. And even the public health is private in Chile. So oh. when I come back to Brazil, I was able to go to the public health and go to the hospital and take some medicine oh. to, to recover myself. And I come back to work 24 hours after mm. return. Victor, this is an amazing angle too, where you are standing over almost behind the soldiers. I am in the tank, in, just close to the, yeah, to the tank, yeah. because the people are not throwing rocks at the time. So I, I was able to be with the cops. Yeah. yeah, not always trying to be with the police force because they, if they see me and recognize me like a journalist, maybe in my head works, but I don't know for sure. Uh, maybe they stop the finger when they try to shoot. Yes, yes. Oh, I see this guy's a journalist. It's not, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know, maybe this half second thought can pass in his head. Mm. I, the blessing of a second thought to save your life. I have the bowed eyes. I'm more fortunate to some colleagues who lost his eyes taking pictures. Mm. Is it, is, is, it's too much. What a sacrifice to truth. To sacrifice to show the truth. Yeah. You need to show what's happening in the world without filters. The photo can do that. Yeah. The photo can show the language. I'm not saying the people is not throwing rocks. I'm not saying the people is not burning not stolen, is yeah. not attacking the police. What I'm showing is the police is prepared, have guns, have helmets, have uh, vests, have masks, mm -hmm. have <laughs> a lot of chemicals, right. and the people have sticks, rocks, and some sh homemade shield. Yeah. And a lot of bravery in their heart. Yes, when the society is not help them, they need to help himself. This is the way, they, they want a, a possibility for a new constitution. In Chile, they have the old dictatorship, the Pinochet dictatorship constitution. Mm -hmm. You know, in Chile, you don't have right to, to water because they sold the water rights. So the companies uh, can take the water from you so you, know, you can have your farm here and you, you're not uh, allowed to take water to put in your, in your growth. You can't do that. Mm. Let's go on to the next one now. I don't know what the next photo is. Oh, this is bad. This is an old lady. Yeah. And the, the, my camera is broken, that. It's already broken. The police broke my camera. Oh. And they don't like my photos. I understand yeah. that. Mm. But they throwing gas to uh, 70. I remember the interview. This woman gives an interview. 70 years old lady mm. with a stick <sighs> against a tank. It's a gas tank. Yeah. And you can see in the picture some blurs. Is because the cops used her, throw me at, at, at the floor and broke my camera and oh tried to God. fix it in the middle of that. And I, I was able to take this picture. What a picture it is. This is an exclusive one. I, I see a, a colleague with better pictures, so I never saw this picture. I say, ah, oh, it's not good enough to show this moment, but it's good here to show what's the reality. A woman, an old lady with stick yeah. against a tank. And she's standing there so strongly. Yes, she's standing there strongly. And with that speaks volumes to us. That speaks volumes. Yeah. You can see the gas behind her inside. Yeah. It's everybody, the rocks. And who's are... behind her? It looks like a soldier is behind her with the helmet. No, he's a photographer. Oh, okay. He's a photojournalist. We yeah. need to be on these places to show what's happening. Yeah. My picture have the, I don't know if it's a quality, but it can show the rocks on the, on the floor. Yes. So you can show, it's not, nobody there is, yeah. is attacking without provocation. Right. 
You know, one of the problems to have a military police is because they never rest. They never go home if you, as in a conflict. Mm, mm. They like an army, so they need to be on the headquarters. They need to be uh, far away from their families. Mm. I talk to them and one of them say, I don't see my two months daughter from the last two weeks. Yeah. yeah. I need to ask for my captains if they allowed me to go home, kiss my daughter. Mm. and come back mm -hmm. or my colleagues is not, were not able to see their families too it's difficult and the most difficult is the most media in Latin America doesn't want to show this they prefer the writer vision, the associated press the French press vision mm. so you, you have a unified vision in not different it's a, it's a kind of censorship, then, that happens. Yeah, I'm not so expensive journalist, but yeah. <laughs> it's, I, 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 I am more expensive than a writer's monthly fee, so... Mm. I know. This is a gas attack from the police. Mm. You can't even see the demonstrators in it. No, you almost... Yeah. You, you, you see the gas, so you are able to see. And they are attacking with all. They're trying to remove the people from uh, Dignity Square. Yeah. So they use a lot of gas. And this is what happened after the, the gas attack. The people come back. The people mm. never leave. And you see the fire, because if you're receiving gas all day long, you even don't feel, and you never stop. You start to continuous, continuous, continuous. And this is all young people. Yeah. And what is the fire of it? It looks like something is being burned. There, yes, they are burning stuff to stop the police. Okay. If you burn some stuff on the streets, they need to ask for the tank. The weather thing to throw water there mm -hmm. so they can walk. So <laughs> they're using fire to stop the police yes. all the time. But you can see to the protection of the police, you can see to the, the graffitis. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see some graffiti? ACAB is not, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that it's because it's English. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's not good uh, words, but. Uh, this means they. This is a confrontation. Even the Chilean president call it. It's a war. Mm. And this is uh, media coverage. Okay. This is Argentina channel, an Argentinian channel. They are not at the confrontation zone. I was resting, so I walk about three squares from the uh -huh. tear gas zone. And I see then just close to a place who was attacked the day before. And they are talking about the violence. They are talking about what's happening, transmitting for, for a network, but without be in confrontation zone. This guy doesn't have any tear gas in. Right. In his eyes. And there are no other people around. No. Nope. So you really are depending upon what his words are, whatever he's saying. Yeah. Right? And without, without reading what, you without, can't read what's not there. It's not yes, there. It, the, you don't see any graffiti. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see any confrontation. Yes, it, it was a confrontation zone for a day before, but not, not anymore. But the media, the traditional media is doing that. They are not there. They don't see that. When they see, when they are in the zone of confrontation, they need to pay more for journalists. They need to pay more for the photographers, to photojournalists, to videographers, mm -hmm. because you need health insurance. Right, right. You need to protect your people. Yeah. And you be have some uh, injured 
employees, you have some uh, injuries, and you need to pay for that, like employee. Right, right. And they don't want it. But that isn't the main thing, is it, Victor? I mean, they don't want the truth. Isn't that it? They that, want the, the truth, but a comfortable and long-distance truth with a big lens, with big cameras. A long-distance truth? Yes. Young. They don't want to be on the front line. Mm. I, even, even me, I don't want to be on the front line. Yeah. But I need to be there to show what's happening in the world, what's happening in Chile. I was there in 2013 in Sao Paulo when the riots starts. And the bull riots starts about two cents of dollar of bus fare. <laughs> so mm. it's the truth. And you need to be there to show the truth. Mm. To show what's happened when the students start a riot. What's happened when the people say it's, done, it's not enough. I want more for my society. Mm. So you are a frontline witness and you, ha you carry away these photographs, which we can see then at any time. And hopefully we could people will continue to see them. And with this program here on Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy, we're getting some of your photographs out. Yes, and I really appreciate the opportunity to show my work, to show some of the true, the hiding true from Chile, because you never see photos like that in the traditional media. Mm -hmm. You only see it in social network, on Instagram, a little bit because they are censored. Mm -hmm. so, but I am allowed to, to show something of that, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, well, Victor, we really appreciate you're just passing through here in Burlington, Vermont. We appreciate so much that you're here and whatever photographs you take here, you will bring to the world. And it's with deep, deep gratitude that we, we thank you for yeah. coming on this program. I really appreciate it. Uh, I have my Instagram, my professional Instagram. If somebody want to see, is open, is allowed. And it's on, it's on the camera. Thank you. And uh, if the people like to see my work, you can see some different photos there and from different works. And the next month, I start in the Sao Paulo subway and uh, exposition for my photos. I'll not be there, but <laughs> yeah. my photos will be on the Sao Paulo subway. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. So thank you so much, Victor. And viewers, we have the, uh, the email address to uh, communicate with Victor and to uh, access his, more of his photographs. And with deep gratitude, we say thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Margaret. Goodbye for now. Thank you, viewers.